Friday Club studio. And Martin, some interesting news emerged this week. Ben Brookhouse, son of leading owner in the National Hunt Sphere, Roger Brookhouse, is taking up training for the first time. Quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah, fair play to him. But about time he, uh, he bit the bullet and did it for himself. He's a plenty of experience. Uh, nice guy, Ben. So look forward to seeing him having his first runners. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm delighted to say we can welcome Mr. Ben Brookhouse to the show. A very good evening to you, sir. Evening. Now, this is all very exciting, I imagine, for you. Uh, I did read in the R Racing Post article earlier this week that you did your training module around the same time as Dan Skelton and Charlie Appleby. So this has been quite a long time coming, I imagine. And to finally get this license under your belt, must be pretty exciting. Yeah, it's been... it's been the dream the whole time really to finally get my license out and go at it myself um i did the one with dan skelton and becca menzies and it was just really a shot in the dark becky said to me you know what you were doing i said not a lot and she said well why don't you come to new market and do module one so kind of booked a week off work at the time and went over to new market and spent a week in new market with uh, dan skelton charlie appleby rebecca menzies um and, and a good bunch yeah, absolutely. Um, I imagine, considering your father is Roger Brookhouse, very successful owner in the national hunt sphere over the past few years, I imagine you've been pretty heavily involved in, in racing for most of your life. At what stage did you really want to become a trainer? Um, if you'd have asked me well, 10 years ago, I'd have said 18. Um, you know, I'm a cocky young lad, always wanted to go and do it straight away. But I'm glad I took my time. Um, feels like the right time now. I've learned a lot from a lot of good people. And it's you know, now's the right time. You know, I'm 29, pushing 30. So it's time to go out and have a go at it myself now. Yeah, it certainly is. And you say you've learned a lot from various people. Just talk us through that, because I know you've um, you've been under the, the tutelage of some, some pretty big names in the sport, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I started off with Ian Williams back when I was 17. Um, when I turned about 19, I left for Ireland, went over to Ireland and went, ended up going to Henry de Bromhead. Um, I was told Jim Bulgers was the place to go if you want to train. Uh, a lot of good people have been through there. Um, I was warned it's very hard work though. Um, a lot of hard work and they weren't wrong. Um, but it's a very good grounding. You get a lot of respect. Um, hard work's ingrained in you from day one and a lot of good people put me in a good position to get there and where I am now. And then I came back to England um, for family reasons and went to Newmarket for a year for Hugo Palmer. And then Ian Williams was looking for an assistant and it was only 20 minutes from home. Um, and Ian was always very good to me when I was with him at a young age. So I went back to Ian. He was good enough to have me back um, as assistant trainer and was there for the last five years. Yeah, pretty good learning experience, I'd say, all round from those maestros of the game. Martin Dwyer is alongside me, Ben. I think you've got, you've got a question from me, Martin. Yeah, hey, Ben, you all right? Yeah, good, Martin, you? Nervous or excited about being a trainer? Um, 70% nervous, 30% excited. I, I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say what took you so long. You did say you took your module quite a, a while ago, but I am going to put you on the spot. You've been with, with some great trainers. Who have you learned the most from? Um, probably Ian Williams. Well, definitely Ian Williams. Definitely. Is that because you're going to be a, a, you're going to train jumpers and flat? You're going to go dual license. Dual license, yeah. Flat jump, everything. You know, whatever. If it's got four legs, I'll train it. Uh, and how many are you going to start off with? Um, got eighteen in at the minute. Um, another two turning up next week, and I've got six more yearlings still to come in. So knocking around the 30 mark excellent how have you found uh, getting start Ben and when, when's likely to be your, your first run do you think um, two weeks I got granted my license the other day um, 14 days till I can officially run a horse um, and yeah got two weeks now so looking forward to it and I read in that same article that uh, Henry de Bromhead was the reason behind you starting out your career in Newmarket. Was that always something you, you had you had a desire to do or was it uh, quite a late decision to go to Newmarket? Uh, I had a few yards sort of put to me. Um, again, well-connected through Dadnat and 
I was offered a few yards to have a look at and I've always been used to a private place. Um, but the one thing I wanted was good gallops and you, know, you can't get better gallops than new market. Um, and it, it's been good settling in, you know, it's taken, taken a month and I'm probably still not settled in totally. Um, staff wise, I've, I've built quite a decent team up already. I've got some good people. Um, and yeah, we're getting there. You know, December is going to be a month of really putting to the test what I, picked up in the last month and then sort of next year hopefully it'll be smooth sailing touch wood Ben Ben, I guess you've learnt a lot from Ian Williams obviously a dual trainer but have you got a plan in mind for training your jumpers as as uh, opposed to your flat horses I was talking to AP McCoy yesterday and he was telling me he was schooling for Richard Hughes and he had to give him a, a lesson in how to train jumpers because he, he says that flat trainers just can't train get, get stayers fit enough or, or jumpers fit enough so have you got a idea for that and have you got the different gallops in Newmarket to use? Yeah, there's a massive selection of gallops in Newmarket and they're all kept in unbelievably good standards thanks to the Jockey Club. Um, some f- flat horses, yeah, you, you can keep them sparky and keep them fresh um, but with jumpers being sparky, being fresh can cause you to you know take some bold leaps at times and you, you want them settled through the race to get the long distance. Um, you know, there's some cracking gallops on Warren Hill side of the town with Long Hill being a, a really nice gallop side hill. Um, you know, a, a very wise man once told me, just get them fit. The pedigree will do the rest. And, you know, I do live by that. Ben, a lot of the reason plenty of trainers want to go into training originally is the eventual success they may or may not have a very high level we've seen that with Dan Skelton recently He's starting to get to that very uh, exceptionally high level that so many aspire to do when you were with Jim Bolger I believe you were there at the time that Dawn Approach won the 2000 guineas uh, what kind of a feeling was that for you being a, being a part of such a big race success well I was there the year after Dawn Approach won the 2000 guineas but I was there the year Lucida was second in the 1000 guineas and Placecock won the Irish 1000 guineas um and to to have success on a massive scale like that it's you know there's no other there's no words that can describe it really it, it's that's what you get out of bed you know at 4 in the morning 4 and and you get back into bed at half 9 at night to go for them big days and and to be successful you know you you feel like you're king for half an hour till the next race comes along and there's a new king that gets crowned yeah i can imagine um, how how much joy did you get from from your dad's horse's success and particularly in the last few years of course somerville boy winning at the cheltenham festival cheltenny another, another one who, who won at the cheltenham festival how much joy did that bring you being you know a family member and a, a big part of the team you know, horses are one thing, but family is the original thing, and that's what it's all about. Um, you know, and dad nowadays breeds a lot more than some of the big, big horses that we used to buy at the time, which used, you know, we used to spend decent money, and nowadays decent money won't get you half of what it used to get you nowadays. Um, so we breed a lot more than we have um, before, and to to get success from a horse that dad has bred from a mare that dad has bred and he owns the stallion you know it gives him i can't imagine how much you know joy it gives him um they take time when you breed them but with the price of buying what looks like a good horse nowadays skyrocketing you, you know if you put the effort in um to to make a good horse it it's a quarter of the cost a lot of the time and it's enjoyable to see them progress from a foal to a yearling to a two-year-old to if they're flat horses you know getting broken in as yearlings and running at two or if they're bumper horses seeing them go for their first race course gallop and and just seeing them progress you know i spend that much time with them they're like family um and that's that's to see them grow up like that is the that's that's what you get out of bed for that and winning races as well you know and, and bringing owners joy that's that's you know it's their dream I'm just trying to help them achieve it um, and the horses are the tools that we used to do it and one very good horse was Somerville Boy we just watched him winning the Supreme Novices Hurdle I still don't quite know how he managed to do it because he completely missed out the second last and to be honest he didn't jump the last hurdle particularly well either he just had an amazing engine didn't he very early on in his career yeah he 
you know, two mile races over hurdles that are real hell to skelter races and, and to miss the second last the way he did and to get back up and get rolling again. I mean, most people would have probably just sat up on it and gone, that's you done for the day. But, um, you know, Noel picked him up. He obviously felt there was more in the tank left to give and got after him and, and he, he, he got going again to, to storm home, which, you know, I, I, I still don't know how he did it. I mean, it's no, not really too dissimilar to Western War Horse. I mean, how he won an Arkle, I'll never know, but you know, dad had the faith in him to run him in the Arkle. And sometimes faith is all it takes. Plenty of my friends in the past have always bemoaned the fact that Western Wars got up to the night champagne fever in that cracking finish in the Arkle, because it was a real thriller. Uh, he's a horse who, unfortunately, we didn't see too much of after that, but uh, this really was his, um, his pièce de résistance, if you like, wasn't it? Yeah, he was a horse with a lot of ability and, um, and, a, and a good few quirks to come along with him. Um, I've actually got a brother here now at the minute, he's a three-year-old, and he doesn't seem to have half the quirks, but I hope he has the same amount of ability. Um, he, he a very gifted animal. Um, you know, how David managed him and how the, the, the breakers and the point-to-point -point trainers handled him, I, I, I'll never know. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, after, after Cheltenham, he went to Aintree and came back with an injury, and it was just a a tough road for him from there so as 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 dad does with often of his horses he chooses the best option for him and he, we retired him after that you know he owed no one anything i mean getting on the plane going back to ireland after western war horse had just chinned one of the willie mullins rollers wasn't a fun experience i definitely kept my head down that day <laughs> no i can imagine that was very much the case uh, what an amazing finish it was to that race. We just saw it back. Uh, Western War was just chinning Champagne Fever in, in the closing stage. You spoke about uh, his relation just a minute ago. Of the horses that you've got in your armoury at the moment that you're, that you're likely to run in, in the next few months or so, have you got any you're particularly looking forward to? Um, I've got As Luck Goes. He's a homebred of Dad's by You're Going to Be Lucky out of a mare called She's the Lady. Dad owns You're Going to Be Lucky the Stallion. He bred She's the Lady and he bred um he owned the mother from there so he's a real family affair he's won two bumpers one at worcester and one at fontwell um and he'll go for the listed bumper at ascot hopefully on the 16th um a lot of natural ability he seems to show and he's a, a real smart looker and he's everything you want in a, in a racehorse and again we won't push him too much he'll have plenty of time and he's also not a good advert for the stallion so we'll we'll take our time with him We've also got, as Martin will know, Lucky's Dreams full brother as a three-year-old. But uh, don't worry, Martin, he won't be running on the flat. And he'll be going for a bumper. <laughs> so, uh, but he's he again really well bred, really good pedigree, nice looks, good physique, good attitudes. You know, that's that's what you need in in, in horses nowadays because it's not easy for him. Uh, Martin, what does he mean by Lucky's Dream? Is it a horse that you you know fairly well? <laughs> well. Ben will, ben will confirm. Um, I, I rode him quite a few times, and I never disliked riding a horse as much as I disliked riding him. I won on him a few times. I've never given a horse such a bad ride and won on him, but this is him here. I'm stuck on the outside. At this point, I'm, I'm, I'm three wide in the light blue colours, obviously, and um, I had to put two hands on one rein because he used to hang so bad. But this horse, he'd walk round the paddock, I'd be stood with Ben, and the horse would look at me and just laugh. I just... I found it impossible to ride him, but I won him a few times. He used to pull and hang, and he was hard work, but uh, he knew how to win races. But I don't feel too bad. He ran away with PJ McDonald one day, and uh, in this race, he got a run on me on the back straight, and I hit the front too soon, and did everything wrong, but still managed to win. But um, it was a love-hate relationship between me and him, wasn't it, Ben? Yeah, I think this was the day he went down the back straight hanging outside to the right and then in the home straight he decided to hang to the left <laughs> um again he's a gifted horse a lot of ability you know he's a good good nice animal real nice animal and he'll he'll be coming here he's just recovering from a small injury at the minute um he's in pre-training henry tonight um he is handicapped over hurdles he's won nine races and, and one all-weather bumper so you know it takes a fair horse to win 10 races i think he's matured a bit hasn't he, he doesn't he's not as wayward now he doesn't hang as much does he uh, I don't know. I saw him the other day at Henry tonight. <laughs> and he looked pretty fresh. You know, he, he he's still his his brother's the same though. His brother's got a spark in him, um, but he's just too young at the minute to know what to do with it. He used to bully me, Ben. What about training for your dad? Is that going to bring a bit of added pressure, or will it just make it sweeter when the big winners come in? I think about that one. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. We we we've worked together, obviously. For a long time, um, 
but we've we've had horses at Ian's um and we've always been at loggerheads at times, but we, we we've got on really well the last few years. Um he's always had a lot of good people around him advising him and you know, I'm lucky enough to have become one of the people now. Um which, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm his son, if I wasn't good enough to advise him or make decisions he wouldn't let me. Um but it's his it's his hobby. He enjoys it and the fact I can be involved with it, I'm sure bring him some joy as long as they win, you know. Ben, thanks very much indeed for your time. Best of luck for the coming months. Um, plenty to look forward to, I imagine, and hopefully some success for you. And uh, with any luck, we can welcome you back on the Friday Club at some time soon. No problem. Thanks very much. Anytime.